We know this story six weeks down the road, 90 days down the road. We like the way our body looks. And now something really interesting happens. We get anxious if we don't go to the gym. It feels weird to not work out. It feels weird to not eat clean. So the very thing that we used to hate, we now love. Why? Well, it turns out humans tend to get passionate about things, wait for it, that they're doing well at. So we're gonna go through the three phases of momentum today. There are three phases to building momentum, and I wanna give you the formula for momentum to start because this really is the key. So Brennan is, is one of the white rabbits in our business right now. I'm super proud of him. He's doing very well. A lot of people are wondering, how did you do this? How are you, how are you at this level? What he's doing now isn't why he's successful. It is what he has been doing that is leading to this level of success, okay? We all start in any new endeavor, no matter what we're doing. This could be a relationship, it could be a new business, it could be a workout. We all start in the creating momentum phase, which sucks. It is by far the hardest phase to go through, which is why most people don't. They quit before they ever get through it. In the creating momentum phase, you will feel grossly overworked and underpaid. This is tricky if you live in an entitled society because the math won't make sense to your endeavor. So we're gonna talk about creating momentum here in a second. But here's our formula. It's the law of Big Mo. If anybody's uh, read 21 Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell, the law of Big Mo. Remember, when you have momentum, you are going to look better than you really are. When you don't have momentum, you'll look worse than you really are. This is crucial because we are most likely to make our biggest mistakes when we are becoming ultra successful or failing, right? When the momentum is either working against us or for us. When we have a lot of momentum, we'll think we're better than we really are and we won't have an accurate understanding of where we're at and we're liable to make bad decisions because we're overconfident. When we don't have momentum, we think we're worse than we really are, we get negged out, we quit, we don't give it where we are because like, man, I'm just not getting anywhere, okay? So we're gonna get into why momentum is important. But the formula for momentum, which goes back to consistency, rhythm, and tempo, is focus plus intensity over time equals momentum. And business really is a momentum game. And you wanna learn how to protect your momentum. Okay, so number one is creating momentum. As I said before, the creating momentum phase sucks. You will feel likely greatly overworked and underpaid. And this is really in any endeavor. You go to the gym, first get into the gym, you're trying to build momentum. You get in day one, you hide yourself a trainer, they're screaming at you. They're telling you to do five more push-ups. Your body is screaming, I don't wanna do any more push-ups. You're feeling anxious. You may feel depressed. These are very real emotions because your body is being challenged to grow. I think it's hilarious. We have a message in our society right now, specifically to people under 30. I think we're grossly underserving them by saying this. We say, follow your passions. Oh, yes, right, yes, passions. As if we know what our passions are. Anybody got dusty rollerblades, guitar, piano, that business that didn't quite work out, business in a box, just following my heart. In the end, you do want to follow your passion but that's really predicated upon you actually knowing what your passions are. And this is confusing an entire generation because what they hear is, if I don't feel like doing it right now, maybe I shouldn't. Oh yeah, yeah, that really, that math checks out. Any parents in the room? A few of us, yep. I don't feel like taking my kids to school, fuck it. Just... All right, we get lost in this idea that it's all about feelings. So, go to the doctor, doctor tells you, yeah, bro, you better get in the gym or things aren't gonna stop working. You're like, well, I don't really do the gym thing. That's not what I do. Well, I suggest you start going to the gym. So, all right, start going to the gym. Hire yourself a trainer, you get in the gym. Haven't been in years or ever. How do you think you're gonna feel? Excited? Probably gonna feel nervous, a little confused. Probably don't know what you don't know. You may be cautiously optimistic, but you're probably not feeling it yet. Get into the gym, you get with your trainer, he starts telling your body to work. You start sweating, you start breathing hard. Maybe those aren't things you've done in a long time. Does not feel good yet. In fact, it feels probably the opposite of good. It feels like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. And if you're listening to your feelings, you may walk right out of that gym. That's why you hire a good trainer. Trainer keeps you in the game. You get through the day. You feel good about it. Now, when you get home, you feel, do you look any better? You get in the mirror and you're like, fuck yeah, one day, look at me. Nope. In fact, there's a really good chance it's gonna get worse before it gets better. You get home. They're like, hey, yo, good job with that 25 push-ups today. By the way, uh, no donuts tonight. <laughs> oh, no donuts, wait, what? Yeah, and six pack of beer, no. What? That's my dinner. Yeah, tonight it's broccoli, a little bit of rice, chicken breast. But can I, just chicken breast. Wait, what? So now I'm working harder and I don't get to have my food that makes me feel good? Yeah, no, just chicken breast. So you get home, you have your chicken breast, your little piece of rice, trying to split it across all the protein, get your broccoli. 
feeling good, right? Go to bed that night, get up the next morning, and you feel epic, right? No, you're like, fucking hell, why, why don't my legs work anymore? <laughs> you feel worse, because you're sore. Why? Because you're in the creating momentum phase. Now, if you're paying attention to your emotions right now, what are your emotions screaming at you? Quit, stop, this isn't for you. You're not genetically predisposed to be in a healthy state. Don't work out, this is silly. I'm just listening to my heart. No, you're not. This is the creating momentum phase. It sucks, and I'm, I'm hitting this hard because I want everyone to get it. It is the hardest phase, which is why so few people get through it. Because, based on, I think, pretty brilliant design, all our brain is trying to tell us is something is changing. And we interpret that change negatively more often than not. But those of us who've been in the gym for a while know this story. Two weeks go by, anything different? Three weeks? Maybe. Maybe there's lines where there used to not be lines. You're like, oh! Right? Maybe you have a little bit more energy. You start to get more excited. That excitement leads you to go, well, maybe I could wear different clothes. What if I have more chicken breast? What if I have less of this? What if I do more of this workout? What if I go from three days a week to four days a week? Why? Why are you starting to get excited? Because you're starting to get a result, but did it lead with result? No, it led with, I should quit. Everyone goes through this phase. And you'll go through this phase in different areas of your life, in different seasons, under different titles. And if you're aware of it, you'll navigate it well. If you're not, it may fuck you up. Because creating momentum sucks. We know this story six weeks down the road, 90 days down the road. We like the way our body looks. And now something really interesting happens. We get anxious if we don't go to the gym. It feels weird to not work out. It feels weird to not eat clean. So the very thing that we used to hate, we now love. Why? Well, it turns out Humans tend to get passionate about things, wait for it, that they're doing well at. You see why this is tricky to teach people to follow their passions early in life? The best lies are 60% truth. There's enough truth in there that it feels right. It's just misleading. We have to commit to something. And as we get better and better at it, we'll get more and more excited about it. So this is this creating momentum phase. You're working so hard, you're not making any money. Why would you do this? Business owners probably wouldn't tell you that. But statistically, most of us have parents that are employees. And employees will tell you that because they're living from a different world. This brings me to one of my organizing principles. Get advice from people who are where you want to be. Mom means well. Dad means well. 99% of the time, they love us and they only want what's best for us. Not a diss at mom and dad. But just because they mean well doesn't mean they necessarily know best in particular areas of your life. They can only inform you on their experiences. So you want to broaden your circle. You want to get around people who can teach you things, who can add value to you and open your perspective on different things. Okay, so creating momentum sucks, but you do it long enough and you begin to build momentum. The next phase is maintaining momentum. Ah, this is a tricky one. So now you've worked really hard, you built some momentum and you're seeing a result. Now you feel like you're getting paid at least adequately for the result you're getting. Right in the gym, you may see gain, strength gains, you may see BMI gains, whatever metrics you're tracking. In the business, you're starting to build momentum, you have a team, you're building revenue, your production is, is solid, you're making good money. What do you think the, uh, the vulnerability is here? You get comfortable, complacent, you think you're better than you really are, you start to relax. I should go on vacation, I deserve it. Man, how many times I've seen that? Somebody makes a few thousand dollars for a few weeks and suddenly they're buying a new whip, upgrading their lifestyle, putting more pressure on the whole system. Maintaining momentum is the easiest to do from a consistency standpoint, but the hardest to pull off because of human. Human complicates this because we have all of our stories about what we think this means for us. Truthfully, it's usually because our standards are way lower than we'd like to admit, and we feel fulfilled with the current level of achievement we have. So we're like, ah, Throw my feet up, enjoy the ride. Now here's the insidious thing about momentum. So one of the biggest, biggest harbors coming in the United States is right here in LA. And you get these huge freighters that come in from Asia. You know, because of how big they are and how fast they move across the Pacific, that they have to start slowing down to get into the port five miles before they get to the port. Why? Because they have insane momentum. And so the problem with momentum is it makes you look better than you really are. What does that look like? Well, you may stop doing the thing that got you to where you're at long before you feel the pain of doing it. Jim, you crack, you have a donut on a Saturday. Your body gonna look different? No, you're like, well, I had a donut on a Saturday. What if I do one on a Sunday? All right, just weekends. Now I've been in the gym for a long time and you have a donut on a Saturday or a Sunday. 
You gonna look any different? Probably not. How about every Saturday and Sunday? It may take a little bit of time, but eventually things are gonna start changing. But it happens so slowly that you may not realize what you changed. So now you're really confused. I don't know what happened. I think my genetics are changing or something. I don't know, the business doesn't work the way it used to. Uh -huh. We start telling ourselves stories because we don't know how to solve for who? Us. And we're not aware enough to realize we were changing things. And we did it over a slow enough period of time, we didn't recognize how it began to mess with our business. So you do this long enough and you kill enough of your momentum, you go back to square one, which means you are now doing what? Creating momentum again, which as outlined before, sucks. And many people quit in that phase, the second time through. Wherever you are, when it's like, fuck, I don't wanna have to do this again. Well, there is a key to making it not happen again. What is it? Maintain momentum. Don't slow down. Keep yourself motivated. This can be hard to do. In any given moment, we are going to do what we value most. And if most of us were honest about what we value and what our standards are, they're not what we say they are. And that's part of the reason why we compete with ourselves. So we have competing values. Oh, but I wanna do this and I wanna do that. And then we kill the golden goose and we have to start over. I don't have to say it, but the older you get, the harder it is to start over. Not necessarily because you're getting older, you just have more responsibilities. You have more things you have to do. So the idea of starting over is like, ugh. And people surrender more and more of their life, which I find tragic, but it happens. I see it all the time. Motivation gets you going, discipline keeps you going. Yeah, don't rely on your motivation, rely on your discipline, for sure. Because you're gonna have days when you feel like crap, you don't feel good, you don't wanna go get it done, but you do it anyway. If we always did what we felt like doing, Carl Rogers sent the word in the 1970s. And I actually think he was a probably pretty good psychologist. He was working on some good things. But he coined the phrase, if it feels good, do it. Which was ran rampant in the hippie movement. You can only guess how that went. Which sounds like a lot of fun. And at some level of the game, if you're a conscious enough human being, it probably is the right move. But for the unconscious human, that's all kinds of bad. There are lots of things that you should do that don't necessarily feel good doing in the moment. So yeah, I would agree with you. Don't just rely on the way you feel. I guess it's theoretically possible that you could be advancing momentum in life where you're just like winning at everything. But I think it's most useful to see it as a, a per area of your life basis. You hear this a lot in our business, but it applies in a lot of places. When you hear people say, I just gotta get back to basics. What does that imply? You got away from the basics, which is then like, why? Why did you get away from the basics? What made you think that was a good idea? You're more susceptible to taking your foot off the gas and maintaining momentum because you're beginning to get a result. My experience is high performers don't really take their foot off the gas, they just redirect the energy though, right? Like different seasons of life, you wanna have different priorities. Most humans psychologically need a good mixture of short and long-term motivation. Some humans prefer lots of short-term motivation. Some humans can work off more long-term motivation. That's more of a human to human thing and you gotta solve for that. I do think rewarding yourself is important and there's lots of ways that one can do that. You just, you define that for yourself. What does this look like? When I get to this, I'll do this. When I achieve this, I'll buy this. All right, so you can build in little rewards for yourself if that motivates you. My experience as a general rule is the longer you can go without taking the reward, the bigger the reward you can take. So for some people, they like the little rewards. Some of us prefer total lifestyle change as the reward and don't wanna slow down until we get there. Coming into the business, I had a 10 year plan. That was a goal. I didn't slow down. I didn't even really take a vacation through that entire period. My thought process was, does this get me closer to my goal or further apart? That's still how I think, it's just I'm recalibrated now because I achieved a season and now I'm in a new season. So I could go 10 years with very little reward, I guess. Some people can't. You gotta know yourself and know how to hack you. What motivates you? What motivates your guys? But generally a solid mixture of short and long-term motivation works. But as you start to grow into yourself and you begin to understand what's possible and what you can do, your standards usually will go up. One of the consistencies I see in high performers is they tend to be curious people, for better or for worse. I'm very curious. But that curiosity is always pushing the limit. When you push the limit, you figure out where that edge is. You're like, huh, do you think I could do twice as much this week? I did it. Could I do 10x? Right? You're just curious. You want to know more. What's possible? Stay curious. Keep growing. Keep pushing. Keep challenging. The worst thing you could do is settle, especially early in life. And man, do a lot of people do that. It breaks my heart to see it. They die in their mid-20s and they fucking exist for another 50 years. Ugh. Keep pushing yourself. See what, you're, what you can do. What's possible for you? And not anyone else, by the way. 
Comparing yourself to others is a thief. It doesn't work either way. But are you getting better week over week? Are you getting better month over month? Are you getting better year over year? Momentum. It's the big concern when we praise people too early. You wanna praise people. You wanna recognize success. You wanna recognize when people are doing well, but you wanna be careful not to go too far with that because they'll start to believe their own press and think they're better than they really are. And I've seen a lot of those guys fizzle and die. Not just in our business, in life. It's almost better for the scrappy guy who had to work his ass off the entire time and didn't get a lot of love. He's always proving himself, always pushing himself. I've seen plenty of socialites in our business not make it. They were at every event, they were invited to everything, and eventually they fizzle out. It's like, what happened to that guy? He was so talented. They lost their hunger, and they thought they were somewhere they were not. If you enjoyed this video on wealth and would like to get more content like it, check it out. Here's my playlist.